Greetings, Israel, Judah. It's your brother, DFG. Hey, my brothers and sisters. I hope everything is uh, going you know, to plan well to plan with you. Uh, I hope that, you know, you're redeeming, you know, the time, I guess is the right way to say it. In other words, paying attention to what's happening, you know, all around this flat earth, not being consumed with it. Let me, let me be clear. But that you're being aware, that you're being conscious of it. Because there are a lot of events that are coming together. And all of these events were foretold to our brothers and sisters. They were foretold to Israel. And I want to say that with clarity. They were, they were foretold because they're written in our book. So that, you know, when these final days of evil came, we would not be caught unawares. In other words, we would not be caught unprepared. And again, I want to remind my brothers and sisters that, you know, don't close your eyes to what's happening around you. The things that are happening around us are indicators that that is Abba Yah Yahuwah, Alua, is saying to us that, hey, when you see these things start to happen, then understand judgment, you know, is about to befall the nations of the world. Abba Yah is not asleep. You know, he hasn't forgotten the crimes that were uh, committed against his people. These crimes have gone on for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And Abba Yah warned that a day would come. Daniel said a day would come. He told us through the, well, the book of Daniel coming from the mouth, you know, between Gabriel and Michael, you know, and Daniel 12 told us that a day would come. Most of Daniel, quite frankly. I don't want to digress here, but a lot of Daniel warns about the signs of the end the kingdoms that would rise, the kingdoms that would be destroyed, and the final kingdom that would rule, and then the rulership that comes after destruction. That what it, um, Ezra 6 and 9 says, that, that, the, you know, that Esau is the end of the world, and, and Jacob or Israel, Jacob, is, is the beginning of the, of the new world which follows. But brothers and sisters, you know, we're getting there, and we're getting there fast, quick, in a hurry. And that's why you see the desperation going on around the world, why these countries are trying to, big countries are trying to overtake small countries, bigger countries are aligning themselves against other, you know, big countries, because they are about to do a declaration of the final battle. You know, these, these are the sounds, these are the trumpets, this is the chauffeur, for lack of a better word. Our Yah chauffeur, chauffeur of blowing of the trumpet to us my dear brothers and sisters, to let us know that they are blowing the shofar upon the earth so that Abba Yah's judgment can settle this matter once and for all. And we have to, again, be mindful of that. And that's why he reminds us, to, you know, to be wise. And wisdom come in the knowledge of the book. And my brothers and sisters, I know you know that, at least most of you all. But wisdom comes in the knowledge of the book. What book? You know, his cipher. You know, we know it better. In truth, his, his, the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh. And you've heard your brother mention it before, you know, the hidden books. And when I say hidden books, I want you to be careful with that, my brothers and sisters. There are a lot of books that are available that are not hidden books that we don't know about. But they're not hidden. The book of Gad, the book of Simeon, the book of um, Levi, you know, the book of Bartholomew, the book of Thomas, you know, those are books are out there. You can go up into almost any, the catacombs of Rome or anywhere where they got, where they're keeping, you know, old writings and you'll find those books there. Most of those books are, are impersonations of real books. It weren't Thomas who wrote it or Bartholomew. Any of, they were Jesuit priests, friars, you know, you know, clergy people who, who, you know, ascribe those books to those men, but really they were pushing the, 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 the dogma you know, of the universal so-called Catholic Church. And they needed all those, those writings and stuff that they could distribute amongst the monks and the priests and all of their clergy people and to train them on how to train us, what they would have called the heathens. And ultimately to assault us, the true people of the book, because they know the day would come that we would wake up and then they would take and they would shine all these little these, these, what they would call writings in front of us to confuse us. And that's a real big challenge that our people are going to have to 
be okay with. That they're going to come at us with all kind of, you know, document, documents, writings, doctrines. Especially those of us who are now waking up. Not only are we waking up to who we are as the people of the book, the Israelites. But we're also waking up to the fact that, you know, our redemption, our salvation had nothing to do with their gods. Quite frankly, our damnation and our condemnation has been foretold and we have been judged because of our lack of knowledge about who our Savior and Redeemer actually is. And so for those of us who are not only, you know, awakened in terms of, you know, knowing that we're the Israelites, but we also are fully aware that we have no other Alua. And I'm saying Alua because I'm trying to, I'm going to do my best to kind of work with, you know, some of our brothers and sisters who are struggling with the word Elohim. And no, I'm not saying I'm walking away from that word, but I, you know, I don't want, I don't want us to be dealing with unnecessary biases. You know, well, this is the right word, my brother. This is the right word, my sister. If you're meaning Elohim as sovereign, the one creator, almighty, Abba, Yah, father, then there is no controversy. But again, sometimes with our people, you know, the metaphor coming to my mind is like, you know, sometimes it's, it's like these men in, 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 in the jungles of Asia. And if you know anything about the jungles of Asia, there are tigers in the jungles of Asia. And you have these, these people who are lost. It's my metaphor. They're lost in the jungles of Asia. And instead of them looking for the tiger or being aware of tigers, some of them are talking about the crickets that are making a lot of noise. And I can't hear the tiger because of these crickets. And they're being distracted, focused on crickets who are no threat and at the same time making them vulnerable to the tiger that eats men. What am I saying? We got to keep the main thing the main thing, brothers and sisters. We, we, we can't allow ourselves, you know, to be so easily, you know, divided around things that maybe are relevant. The crickets are relevant. The crickets are making noise. But the crickets are not going to determine whether or not we get out of this wilderness or jungle alive understanding where that tiger is. Now that's something that's noteworthy and we have to be mindful of. So I push back and I say that, you know, when it comes down to the tiger, let's go to the other T, the Torah. That's where our focus has to be and we have to remain on the Torah. And if we're in the Torah, then we are automatically serving the right Elohim because there's only one Yahuwah Alua, who gave us the Torah. And so if our hearts and we'll focus on Abba Yah's Torah, then we don't have to worry about all the, the other distractions out there, including, you know, particular books, you know, that are in these archives that, you know, that have always been there. They weren't hidden. Nobody gave a crap about them because there wasn't really anything inside of them other than, you know, a story of, a so-called, you know, disciple or, you know, what you would call, you know what I'm saying? Some note, noteworthy man or, in some cases, women or woman. So we have to keep, again, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the important thing, the important thing. And then reminding my brothers and sisters of that, that is, again, if we, we don't want to be getting distracted about because of all the noise that is out there, but we do and we must pay attention to the signs and the events that are going around because, again, those are indicators that Yah is moving us towards the end. He's moving us away from the trouble. In other words, he's, he's calling and saying, it's time to get on the ark. It is time to get out of Sodom. Or the cities there and about. 
And that message was always to who, brothers and sisters? Those who were trusting Yahuwah. Those are the ones who heard. All the others, they were so busy living their best life now. And whatever that meant to them, and I mean whatever that meant to them, they had long ago forgotten Yahuwah and his Torah. And most of them were idolaters. They had their own gods, their own methods of worship, their own method of praise. And none of that saved them. When judgment, you know, was, was, was brought upon those people. And there are many other, I can talk about things that happened in the wilderness when our people decided that they were going to, you know, uh, have a revolt against Moshe because they didn't like the disciplines of the Torah. And they felt like, hey, you know, why does the Torah have to be right? Why can't we be right? Ask Chloe, ask Aaron, ask Marion. Go back and read those stories. And you'll find out that, yeah, man had a right to say what man had to say, but what man didn't understand that Abba Yah heard it and he judged it. And he didn't judge it with a little spanking. The wages of sin is death. Rebellion is as witchcraft. And the wages of witchcraft, sorcery, is an abomination. Again, death. Abba Yah don't, don't handle things like men handle. Men, you know, they, they, they fight and they wrestle and tussle and they dispute and debate. When Abba Yah comes on the scene, he's going to tell you, this is the way it is, and either you do it my way, or I'm going to make sure you're never in the way of anybody else again. And that's important to know. That is important for us to understand. And just, just bringing that out, you know what I'm saying, is to, to just to, to, to be the prerequisite of what I'm going to share with my brothers and sisters. And again, as a reminder, you know, many again of our brothers and sisters, we're waking up to this truth. We're coming out of these lies, this deception, religion, and their gods and their idols. We're coming out of that. We're starting to come into our power as Israelites. At least one third of us are starting to come into our power. And we have no understanding, brothers and sisters, how mighty that power truly is. We have we don't we lost a lot of that knowledge when we went into the darkness, when we were under the judgment. But see, as you come out of that darkness, brothers and sisters, and coming into the knowledge or the light, into the wisdom of Abba Yah, he can also show you what your body is capable of doing, what your mind is capable of manifesting. We have long ago forgotten that. We still manifest, but we manifest in darkness. We really do. A lot of the things that we didn't want, we manifested those things. But we have no understanding of that manifestation. We just kind of think it just happened because I needed it or because I went over there or I signed up over here or I did this or I did that and this was the consequences of never realizing that before all that happened, it started in manifestation. Even the blind can manifest things. Even those who don't know Abba Yah can manifest things. It's a part of who we are in the image and the likeness of the creator, brothers and sisters. Remember, our creator is a creator. If we're made in his likeness, that means what? We have the ability to create as well. We just lost the knowledge of it. Although some of us are still doing it blindly, but praise Yah, some of us are doing it now in full knowledge and understanding. But in, with all that knowledge and understanding, brothers, it's going to attract attention to us going to bring attention to you, my sisters. Brothers, you too. And that attention, is, that attention that you're going to get is not going to be flattery. It's not going to be, you know, recognition. It's not going to be celebrated. It's going to be just the opposite. You're going to get attacked for that. You're going to get despised. You're going to get ostracized. Some will even have to die for that knowledge because you came into the knowledge. And you must understand that. We must understand that. And we need to be solidified in that truth. Because there's no true debt for us in Abba Yah anyway. This life, yeah, we transition. We just go before the Father. We go into the place of rest. Cool, dry, smooth place. And then we go before Abba Yah. And then we go back home. An eternal you know, euphoria, 
unimaginable goodness and beauty and love. That is what awaits us who are in the knowledge of who our Yah is and those of us who understand the importance of not sharing his glory, his authority, his redeeming power with any other entity, whether we find it in books, whether we find it in, you know, buildings, it doesn't matter where it exists. Anything other than Abba Yah's Torah is nothing but a trap and a snare. Crickets that can only bring about damnation if we embrace those things. Again, things will come across our desk. There will be readings. There will be writings. But we have to be solid in what we believe. Because if you're not, you're going to be all over the place. You know, every time you get close, you're going to find yourself falling back. You know, the closer you get, the farther away, the closer you get to it, or you think you're getting to it, the more distant it becomes. Because again, the book says that when you we get distracted or we start to, to try to embrace so many things, we lose the most important thing. That's the old saying, when everything is important, nothing is important. When everything is a priority, nothing is a priority. When you love everything, then you love really nothing. Because love in itself is definitive. It's set apart. That's why Abba did not, Abba Yah did not love the whole world. Jesus did. The other God. Abba Yah loved Israel as he said so. Not because I'm saying as he wrote in his Torah, in his Tanakh, and his apocryphal books. Apple of my eye. Chosen, called out, selected. Mine. For me. For him. Israel. So be careful. Be mindful of that. But let's go over to the book Ecclesiastes. A book that I don't know if we have visited, you know, on this platform. So what a, what better time than these times with so much information is flowing out there. And many of our, my brothers and sisters, some of you have reached out to me and I understand your concern. My, my responsibility is to bring you back in to say, come on, come on back. You're good. I see what you see, too. But our hope and redemption is not in that. My job is to keep us focused on what's, keep the most important thing, the most important thing. And that is the redeeming of our souls and preparing for the end of this wicked earth to ensure that we get passage into the promise of the new earth and new heavens to come. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Now, this is Solomon, the wisest man, as we all know, that ever walked this earth according to what Yahuwah said. There was none wiser than Solomon. None means zero, nobody. In other words, wisdom is understanding. There was none who had more understanding than Solomon. It says here, so remember thy creator in your youth. While the day, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw near, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. Because see, there is no pleasure in materialism, brothers and sisters. There's no pleasure in the things of this earthly life. Not in material things. Not and There's no pleasure in the things that are made with the hands of man, is what he's saying. If we're going to find pleasure in true treasure, it's going to come in unity and in fellowshipping with like-minded believers who also love the one true creator, Alua, Yahuwah. That's where your true treasure is in relationship to him and in relationship with like-minded believers like us. Those of us who are no longer in the darkness of idolatry, religion, and all of its affiliates. He said we need to find that early and we need to hold on to that for eternity. He said, remember the creator. He's talking about remember Yahuwah. So when he says, remember your creator, he's talking about we need to remember again, Yahuwah. Not anybody else. Interesting enough. 
He didn't say remember Jesus or Buddha or Amara or Thor or Apollo. Right? He didn't say that Diana, Isis. He didn't say that. Iris, he never said that. He said the creator is who we should be remembering all the days of our life. So would they end well for us? That we don't end, you know, in uncertainty of what's next, what's going to happen to me when I leave this place. If we have our mind on Yahuwah and Yahuwah only, there's no need to be concerned about where you're going. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about what I do while I'm here to ensure that I don't have to be concerned about that. That's why I'm not concerned about that. And I hope you feel the same way too. If you don't, then you're on the wrong path. Verse two: While the sun is, while the while the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the gardens of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders shall cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened. He's talking about the end of the world, brothers and sisters. That's what he's talking about. That day of trembling and thunder, that's, that's, if you follow, you heard the last message, that's, you know, that's the explosion that I was talking about. That's coming. I know a lot of people don't want to deal with that. Why do you think these, these, the rich, those who are more fortunate are building underground bunkers? Why do you think they're trying to escape you know, the earth, talking about traveling to Mars or wherever they're going. They're not getting to Mars. There's a firmament up there, but that's a story for another day. But they are going to go down in the caves. They're going to go into the mountains. They're going to go into Antarctica. That big wall that's around this flat earth. They're going in all different directions. Got us thinking they're going in outer space. They ain't going into space. They're just trying to make space a distance between what's for between us and them. So when the when the when the fire comes, they think they're gonna be saved, but they're not. Y'all's gonna make those caves, those mountains gonna crush them, they're gonna fall right on them. They're gonna be buried right in hell. Just like Cora and that group that went against the Moshe. Uh, but y'all opened the ground, they went right down into the fire. They think they're escaping, they're only escaping to their they're running to their own death. They don't even know it. But again. Let them go with their gods, their wisdom. They think they know everything and they don't know crap. But anyway, when you read that again, in the day when the guarders of the house shall tremble, verse three, and strong men shall bow themselves. In other words, he's going to break their backs. All that arrogance because they have money, power, and influence. They made themselves to be gods of this earth, the deciders of what's in the best interest of Yah's people. Their own kind too, but especially Yah's people with their foot on our necks and doing everything in their power to keep it there. Yah said he's going to break their back. They're going to be bowing down. They're going to be trembling. They're going to piss their pants, men and women. And unfortunately, two-thirds of Israel right along with them. Because in our era against the two-thirds, it's not about money, power, and influence. It's about doing things the way they want to do it and disregarding what Abba Yah says. So they think they're gods and two-thirds of Israel have made themselves gods unto themselves. Therefore, nobody can tell them nothing. I don't care what you say. That's just your opinion. That's, that's their favorite saying when we bring forth the truth. So you're saying you don't believe in Jesus? And we're sitting there looking at him. How could you not understand that's what I'm saying? I'm just still shocked you still do. He said he's going to break the back of their power. He said the grinders will be few because there's only not going to be many left by the time they finish with all the stuff they're doing. And we don't have to get into that. But just think FEMA camps, and that's enough. And who knows what else they have planned. Verse 4. And the door shall be shut in the streets, and the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. He's going to be a disruption. I'll be about to disrupt this whole thing. That's why those who are chasing these things, 
Change, chasing fame and, and notoriety, brothers and sisters. Chasing, you know, things that can't do anything for you but give you maybe temporary pleasure at best. All oh, that's going to come to nothing is what he's saying to us here. And this is a warning. This is, this is, I suspect Ecclesiastes was written right before Solomon was about to be taken off this earth. There was a last day warning from him to, to, to Israel. Don't forget who your creator is. And more importantly, don't you forget why you're here. Is what he's saying. And in, in, in it's petitioning us to give ear to his writings. He goes on to say, and when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fear and the fear shall be in the way and the almond tree shall flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and the desire shall fail because man goes to his long home and the mourners go about the street. In other words, he's saying men going to die and there's going to be a lot of crying in the street. Jacob's trouble, Rachel, you know what I'm saying? Mourn, crying for her children. It's coming. Not for the one third of us, those of us who Abba Yah is going to put, you know, his protection on because we have turned away from idolatry, religion, you know, and, and now we've, we've, we've come back to relationship. We're not letting ourselves be di di distracted. We're not listening to all these voices out there. Again, as I said earlier, I'm going to say this again, brothers and sisters, young and old, the closer you get to the truth that was hidden, the more you're going to get attacked for that truth. All attack is not violence. Other methods of attack is to distort the truth, to pollute the truth. It's about to start throwing stuff at you. Oh, but well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? You have to, we have to be steadfast in the truth and say, I don't care about this. And I don't care about that. I only care about Yahuwah and his word as it's written in his Torah. Do you hear the words coming out of my mouth? That's the attitude we have to take. Understanding, it's funny, when we were in the darkness, nobody was talking about the proper name. You can say Elohim, Elohim, and nobody said nothing. You can say God, God, God. They never challenged it, did they? But now that we're in the truth, now all of a sudden, they got a whole lot to say. I wonder why. Who sent them? You think Abba Yah sent them? Who sent them? Who sent, you know, when Sarah was concerned, if you in the book of Joshua, when she was concerned about what her husband was doing with her son, her only son, who sent that man to Sarah? And who was that man? When Abraham and Isaac, Ismael, and Elihazer were traveling down the road. And this young man came up to Isaac to engage him in conversation, to call and to question his destiny. Who sent that man? Who was that man? When Abram or Abraham was a, on his way to fulfill the commandments of Abba Yah to him, and an older man, very similar to him, came to him with knowledge about what he was doing and where he was going and questioning, you sure you know what you're doing? You, that's kind of silly. Or you're a fool. Who sent that man to Abraham? You see, when anyone is coming to us, brothers and sisters, and challenging the commandments of Yahuwah, the first question we should say, who sent that man or one man? Where did they come from? Where they've been hiding all this time? When I was in the darkness, they had nothing to say. As a matter of fact, when I was in the darkness, they were celebrating my darkness. But now I've come into Abba Yah's light. And now all of a sudden, they want to engage me. They want to share something with me. In other words, every time the father you try to get out, brothers and sisters, they're going to grab you and try to pull you back in. Who sent them? Well, in Abraham's case, Sarah's case, 
Isaac K. Safe, Satan sent them. They, this, these were demons who came and started planning all this doubt and confusion and, and got them to start questioning Abba Yah's plan for them. It was Satan. And we must understand that, brothers and sisters. Because not to understand that could cause serious, serious interruption of Abba Yah's plan for you. And even more importantly, can cause his judgment against you as what happened to Sarah and many, many others, I might add, but these are stories that you can go in. We've talked about before. Nothing changes here on this earth. We were told, right? Nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. What was, will be, and what is, was. Nothing new. So who's talking to you? Who's in your ear all of a sudden? Who cares now why you're not at church? Who cares now why you keep the Shabbat? When you are not keeping the Shabbat, they didn't give a damn. Now you're keeping the Shabbat. Now they care about why you're keeping the Shabbat. When you were trying to obey the commandments, or when you weren't trying to obey the commandments, they had nothing to say. But now you're trying to keep the commandments. They come into you saying, that's not important. But they had nothing to say when you were wilding out. When you were doing anything, they never ever came to you and said, you know, that's not right, right? You know, the Most High wouldn't have you doing that, right? No, they had nothing to say. I wonder why. Then again, I know why. The question is, do you know why? The challenge we all have to have before us is to understand who sent them and what their goal is. And if they're not coming to you, brothers and sisters, with one Elohim, one Elohuah, one Yahuwah, one sovereign Yahuwah, then I can assure you, Yahuwah did not send them. Now you have a dilemma to sort that out. Or not, you could just resist it. Just turn the other way. Let us continue here. All right. Verse six. Or ever the or ever the silver cord be loosened, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern or the fountain, then shall the dust return to earth as it was, and the rook shall return to Elohim who gave it. And see, when it says returning to Elohim who gave it, talking about your soul, you, the real you, the you that's hidden behind the temple of you, the shell of you, that you. The you that's still alive when you go to sleep, that you. That you that wakes up from a deep sleep, that you. It's going to return back to the creator. And when it returns back to the creator, the next time you hear the voice of the Creator, Daniel 12, chapter 12, verse 2 said, he's going to say, come on in, my daughter, job well done, or get out of here, you, you know, you heathen, unbeliever, rebellious, idolatrous. You didn't accept the truth when I brought you the truth, so now... You are going to be cast into everlasting shame and contempt. It's where you'll spend your eternity in shame and in contempt. In other words, misery. Eternal misery. And we all are going to return before the Creator to hear the final verdict of what is going to be our future eternal, better say our eternal future, that soul, that part of you that quite frankly, you know what I'm saying, that many of us have long lost connection with. And what do I mean by that? We're just doing whatever everybody else is doing. We're agreeing what everybody else is agreeing with. Because so many others are Christians and so many of them and doesn't keep the Shabbat, so many of them 
Other, don't keep the Torah. So many of them don't, you know, read or believe in the apocryphal books because so many of them don't do it. We go right along with them thinking, well, if all of them doing it, they all can't be wrong. When the truth is, they are absolutely wrong. Why would Abba Yah destroy the whole earth if they were right? Why would Abba Yah destroy two thirds of Israel if they were right? Why would he just think about it? Why would he destroy two thirds of our people? What could we be doing for that to happen? Two thirds is a majority. So if you're serving with the majority of serving, you're participating with the majority is participating in. You don't have to have a degree in mathematics to understand that you're probably a two third person. Now you have a chance to come out of that. We all have a chance to come out. We made it, some of us, we made our decision. We came out of idolatry, falsehood, religion. Yeah, we're the Israelites. No question about that. We are the chosen of Elohim. But two thirds of that chosen is going to be rejected because they're in idolatry. They found out that they were Israel and that's where they stopped. But they kept on practicing the religions of the heathens. You've heard your brother say it before. They're still teaching the same doctrine that they were taught when they were in those churches. Hell, some of them still baptizing. But I'm not a Christian, but you're baptizing into Christ. Really. Verse 8. Vanity. Just vanity. He said, learn not the ways of the heathen. Did Jeremiah 10 tell us that? Jeremiah 10, I think it's Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Learn not the ways of the heathen because their ways are what? Vanity. Vain. Here's Solomon saying, vanity, vanity, vanity. Israel is just full of vanity. Talking about Israel and Judah. Vanity, vanity, vanity. You know, Israel is caught up in, in you know, and in, in how would they call it? Always flow showing. That's the word. Always looking for the camera. Always looking for the lights. Always looking to be seen. And Abba Yah saying, that light that you're looking at is not his light. That light that we're running to is like a gnat running to a fire. A moth running to the fire, excuse me. Two-thirds of Israel is like moth running to the fire because they love the light. They love the glitter. They love the show. And they think because everybody else is doing it, it must be okay. But Solomon warned us, did he not? Same wise man Solomon, what he said, Eclid, I mean, Proverbs uh, 14 and 12, write it down. There's a way that seems right to a man. What does that mean, a way that seems right? That means it's going to look like it's okay, nothing is wrong with it. What's the problem? He said the problem is it's going to destroy you, that's the problem. Because it's vain, it's vanity. All religions are vanity. All worshiping anything other than the one sovereign, Yahuwah, is vanity. And he makes that clear. I am a sovereign, you know, Alua. Again, Exodus, what, 22 and 20. As I said, read it for yourself. See, when your mind is made up with the truth, you don't let all these distractors come in with all their, you know, new uh, revelations. The new name, and oh, that name means this, and that name means that. You should ask them a basic question. Are you keeping Abba Yah's Torah, yes or no? Huh? Are you keeping Abba Yah's Torah, yes or no? And if they're not keeping his Torah, you should dismiss them. You should look at them, you're dismissed. Abba Yah has some very uh, hostile awaiting you when you, when you know when your soul is called before Him. Just so you know, you're dismissed though. You can go, and that's the kind of attitude we have to have with them, brothers and sisters. When they hear the truth and they don't and they reject the truth, then I you know that old saying, dust your feet with them, wipe your hands with them. No, it's 
Wipe your hands with them. What does that mean? Leave them be. Leave them to their own demise. It's not our responsibility to save anybody. We don't have a heaven and hell to put nobody in. None of us as men. But we are a voice. We do have a voice. We do have a, a responsibility to warn them. We do have a responsibility to listen to the warnings when the warnings are brought to us. For that, we are accountable for. And to neglect that is to neglect your soul. So that you don't want to do. Don't get caught in rebellion. Resisting because, you know, you don't know any other way other than the broad way or the way that everybody else goes and because everybody else is going that way. Allow yourself to be induced or seduced, the better word, of feeling that, hey, well, if they're all doing it, it can't be that wrong when it's absolutely wrong. Again, when he said there's a way that seems right to a man, the end of that way is the ways of death. He's talking about your soul, brothers and sisters. You're following the masses. You're following their custom, their traditions, their religions, their feast days, their festivals. He say you're putting your soul out there to be destroyed. It's what he's warning us of. Today's message is to warn you not to do it. To remind you of the importance of not doing it. But again, it's vanity. What do you say? Van Ecclesiastes 12. Vanity is a vanity, says the preacher. All is vanity. And he's talking about anything other than remembering the creator and understanding who is our creator. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about vanity and everything that you do. He said your behavior, your actions are vain because you're following the wrong Elohim or Elohims, little e. Or you're following yourself. You become a God unto yourself. He said, that's vain. You didn't bring yourself into this earth. And trust me, when you do leave, you might think it's on your, at your own doing. No, it's going to be Abba Yah's doing. He decides who lives. He decides who dies. Yeah, I know somebody smoked your cousin, but Abba Yah allowed that, that, that situation to be. That was a judgment, most likely. Not all the time. I get it. Sometimes, you know, we are attacked by violent, evil, wicked demon dogs, and they would do wicked stuff. But even then, Abba Yah allowed it. The demons can't take a life without the permission of Abba Yah. Just so you know, brothers and sisters. Not one that Abba Yah hadn't signed off on. So when he says all vanity, he's telling you all the stuff you think is important, it's not important. If Abba Yah is not the center of your life, the cornerstone of everything you believe, you don't, you're not waking up thinking of him, going to bed thinking of him, interacting with him throughout the day, then everything you're doing is worth absolutely nothing once you leave here. You're not going to get credit for any of that. You just wasted time, vanity, a bunch of busy nothing. Going fast, moving fast, but going nowhere. Like being on a treadmill. Just moving, 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 but you're in the same spot. And many people live their whole life that way, sadly. Because they reject the truth. And Yahweh Yah's truth is in his, well, let me not get ahead of myself. Let's find out. Again, please ask it, 12, chapter 12, verse 9. And moreover, the preacher, because the preacher was wise, wise, he had understanding, he had knowledge. He knew how to put his understanding with his knowledge. That's why he wasn't preaching nothingness. Vanity, like you hear some of these other so-called pastors and bishops. A bunch of nothingness. Nobody is growing around them. They're just collecting bodies. Nobody's learning anything around them. Again, they're just collecting bodies. Just a big giant graveyard of souls waiting for judgment. If they're not teaching Yahuwah sovereign only, they're not teaching the Torah sovereign only, then they're teaching some other vain message. 
and it's not going to save not one single person who's aligned themselves with them. Not one. They're not even going to be able to save themselves. I was saying, go, the blind lead the blind, they're both going to fall off the cliff. There'll be blind dogs, greedy, dumb dogs, I think is the way Jim, Jeremiah called them. They got, who do you say? They, you know, they, got, they bark but cannot bite. They're greedy for gain, all they care about. And no matter what you give, it's never enough. Better said, like putting money in bags with holes in it, chasing them. Chasing the, the lying dream that they created, the fairy tale. All the while ignoring abs absolute truth, which twist to Abiyah's Torah word is truth. But the preacher is wise. He's wise. He's wise. His wisdom is warning us. He's using Abiyah's using that same wisdom in your brother to warn us. Me too. Everything I say applies to me as it applies to us. The preacher sought out, I'm sorry, let's go verse, back, nine, back to verse 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he taught the people knowledge. And yes, he gave them good information. And he sought out and he set in order many proverbs. And he studied the word. He cross-referenced line upon line, precept on precept. Here a little, there a little. I tell people all the time, you know, don't ever accuse me of saying that I told you to follow DFG. You lie. I say follow Abba Yah's word and, and hear his watchman. And when Abba Yah calls us a set apart, then if he puts me out front, then I'm going where he's, where he's, where all of us ought to be going. Moses was put out front. He led the people out, brothers and sisters. So did Elijah. So did Abraham. So yes, he put leaders for us to help lead us, but we should be leading you to Yahuwah. And if we're leading you to Yahuwah, that means we're not leading you to ourselves. Men who lead you to themselves, you'll know who they are because they make themselves to be God amongst men. They're very prideful, very arrogant, and they will tell you all about how great they are, how big their communities are, how many people got baptized yesterday. All kind of silly, irrelevant, vanity, foolishness. That really means absolutely nothing. But the wise among us will understand. Again, quoting from Daniel chapter 12. But he said what? The wicked? They're, they're going to reject the wisdom. And they're going to continue to live the way they want to live. And they're not going to let you tell them anything about it. Or when you do, they'll attack you. And when they know they can't, you know, when, when they know that, you know, you know, you're setting yourself apart and you're moving away, then they're going to start throwing all kinds of traps to kind of entrap you to pull you back in by creating confusion. And that's a big problem that many of us are going to be deal, have to deal with and many of my brothers and sisters, I know you're already dealing with it. I'm trying to help you get out of the web of deception. Understand, just because it's written in the book, don't make it out of your truth. That's why he said, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Anyone that's teaching Abba Yah's people and he's called to Abba Yah to do it, that person is going to take you through the whole Tanakh. That person is going to emphasize the importance of the Torah. And that person is not going to shy away from the apocryphal books because those books tie in to all the missing parts that are in the Tanakh that they tried to hide from Abba Yah's people. Gives you the details. And that's how you know you connect all of that together. And the central point is always Yahuwah, the Redeemer of Israel. Anything else, it's crafty, cunning, disinformation, misinformation to cause you to stumble. And Abba Yah does not want you to stumble. The question is, what do you want? He doesn't want us to stumble. The question is, what do we want? And if we want him and we want his truth, we will not stumble. And even if we were to stumble, what he said, a righteous man fall time, Yah will, will, will rise him up seven times. So even if, if you stumble unintentionally, Yah will pick you back up. But if you're stumbling because you're, you're, you know, you, you're, 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 
you don't have your mind made up, you're still walking in a certain uncertainty about who your Savior is, and you keep on wanting to reflect back or challenge Yahuwah as your Redeemer, then ultimately Abba Yah is going to give you over to deception. You either accept Yahuwah as your Redeemer, or you are, or, or else. Any other Elohim other than him, you calling your Savior, your Redeemer, you know, who the person who's gonna, gonna get you out of this hell that we're living in, the body hell, the earth hell. There's only one that's gonna get you out of that, and that is Yahuwah. And nobody else, no meditation, no reflection, no anything like that, no religion, no sacrifices. He said, matter of fact, he don't give a crap about your sacrifice. He said it's better to obey than the sacrifice. Obey what? His commandments. Where can we find his commandments? In his Torah. And anybody who's calling himself a wise man or woman of Abba Yah, and they're not teaching you out of the Torah to knock, a popular book, they're not from Abba Yah. I'm not even saying they're devils. I'm just telling you they're deceived. And if you follow them, you're going to get deceived. And you're going to get deceived. And you're going to get deceived. And, 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 and you're going to fall farther and farther into the darkness. And who knows how great the darkness is going to be where you're going to fall. I suspect you're going to fall far enough where you're going to start getting a, feeling some heat. You're going to get close to that hellfire. Following that and then. Let's go on and see what else he says. He said, the preacher sought out to find acceptable words that were written up and, and that which was written was upright in the words of truth. What is truth? Yahuwah's word is truth. The Torah. Verse, chapter 11, verse 11. And the words are the wise, and the words of wise are as golds. Gold is just like a protector. It's like a gold. It's like what you put, like a lot of times these castles would have this, these things built around them so that the enemy couldn't easily get into their castles. They were part of, of how they defended themselves. So gold, he put things around. His word is a defense around us. Better yet, a fire around us to keep the enemy away from us. But we have to be on the inside to be protected from the enemy. You know, we have to be obedient to the word to be protected from our enemies, the deceivers. And, they are, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. That's why you shouldn't have too many people in your ear. I know some of my brothers and sisters, like me, you just want that word. I get it. You want that truth. You're searching for that truth. But in searching for that truth, who are you listening to? Be careful. Y'all don't have a, a multiplicity of shepherds for you. You have one shepherd. Whoever that is, I will y'all put in front of you. And we're not talking about some dead man risen again. That's foolish. That's not who uh, Solomon is talking about here. And if you're going to call it a shepherd, then how about going to Psalm 23? Who he says? Yahuwah Elohim is my shepherd. Singular. One. Then you got watchmen, shepherds. Those two words can be interchangeable. But you have one sovereign shepherd, and that is Yahuwah and Yahuwah alone. Let me clarify that. One shepherd. Verse 12. And father, by these, my son, be acknowledged. In other words, increase your understanding. Don't forget. Be solid in your belief. Be firm in your belief. And making many cyprins, there is no end, and much study is weariness of the flesh. And what he says here, brothers and sisters, when he said making many cyprins, there is no end. That's what I was saying. They got hundreds, if not thousands of books or writings out there. You can't pay attention to all of that. The vast majority of those writings are to turn you to idolaters, turn us into idolatry. Man worship or, or, or God worship. 
their gods, heathen gods. Including the dead man walking that they call Yahushua. Got you praying to dead, to the dead, neuromancy. Go right over into the book of Deuteronomy. I want to say chapter 18. Brother Adrian, if you're listening, uh, if you don't mind, uh, if you would uh, copy and paste that for the brothers, neuromancing, so they can actually see that 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 is a sin that our people were doing in Egypt, and many of our people are still practicing that right now when they're worshiping the dead. I would appreciate it, my dear brother. I want to say it's Deuteronomy 18, but I could be off. But if you will find it and post it for my brothers and sisters so they can validate what your brother is saying, which I, that is true. We're not supposed to be worshiping nothing dead. No one dead should be who we are bowing our heads to or praying to. It's a form of idolatry or sorcery. You'll see it. And he said, much study is weirdness of the flesh. He said, when we start going to all these books, it's just going to break your brain tired and you're going to get confused. And it's going to make many of our brothers and sisters just give up. Well, I don't know what to believe anymore. Okay. That's your fault. He said, you're supposed to be single-minded. You get the truth and you acknowledge the truth and you hold on to that truth. Verse 13. Let us, and let us hear the conclusion of the matter, of the whole matter. Not some of it. Here's the conclusion of the whole writings. Is what he's saying. The wise preacher. From Abba Yah, Yahuwah. Alua. And God, okay, he said, fear Alua. This is the whole matter of the thing. Fear Alua. Fear, fear Yahuwah. Only Yahuwah. No one else reverence, no other entities, no other Elohim except for the one sovereign creator that he spoke about in verse 1. Remember the creator. He says, For Yahuwah shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, that means the things that you think he doesn't see, brothers, that's he see everything. The eyes of Abiyah go throughout the whole earth looking. Doesn't miss anything. Secret things. You don't think he didn't know what these devils are doing? Digging these caves and opening up CERN and CERN and letting out those demons upon his people, upon this earth, who are increasing their, their earthly knowledge, their vain knowledge, the knowledge that they think going to cause, the, like they built the Tower of Babel, that they think that like the Bab Tower of Babel was to save them. They think AI and all these other information going to save them is not going to save them. As a matter of fact, their own AI is going to destroy them. Musk was saying that the other day. Y'all know who Musk is. M-U-S-K. He was saying it. And he did say destroy. And he did say mankind. Just so you know. So all you lovers of technology and AI just understand what you love. It's going to control most of you one day anyway because you don't want to serve Abba Yah. You don't want to be controlled by the sovereign creator. You want to be servants of men because you love the things of this earth more than you love your own soul. And you're going to pay a price for that if you keep that up. A heavy price. It's not worth it. Nothing is worth your soul, brothers and sisters. Nothing. Let me say this to you again. There is nothing Nothing you can think of, nothing that you possess, nothing that you can desire that's more valuable than your soul. And you need to protect that with all your might. And the only way you can protect that is being inside of Abba Yah, Yahuwah, sovereign truth. Because he's going to judge it. Everything that we do is going to be judged. Some, we're going to be rewarded with everlasting life. Some, because of that judgment, Shame and contempt. Go read Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, and yet there is evil out here, brothers and sisters, a lot of it, and there is good out here, brothers and sisters. We on the side of good. Excuse me. What's good? Abba Yah's truth is good. It's good for your soul. It's good for the soul of your children. 
It's good for the soul that wherever you are, when you finally release this earthly body back to the earth, if y'all don't come and cremate it all first, what is good is that you are in line with him. That way you have nothing to fear. When your judgment day comes. This work I do is to prepare me for the work for that judgment. <laughs> I'm hoping that the work you're doing equally is to prepare yourself for that judgment. You know, that being said, brothers and sisters, I want to remind everybody, you know, that, you know, if you're looking for a like-minded group of people who are studying, you know, the important, the Torah, and you heard Solomon talk about the Torah, the Torah, Abba Yah's Torah, his commandments, keep his commandments as written in his Torah. If you're looking for like-minded brothers and sisters who are doing that, you want an opportunity to at least open your Bible at least one time this week, then we're there for you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, you know, uh, Eastern time. Sharing, teaching, exploring, and listening to one another. So there, so you're not alone. There's a group for you. We're here. The information you can you can look it up. You know, in in the about page. You know how to dial in. It's toll free. Costs you nothing. You don't even have to say anything on the call. Just sit in. You know, bring your book with you, your cipher, your Bible, because you know we we want you to have it because we want you to read along with us. It's not 45 minutes of just running my mouth. We're teaching. And we want you to follow along and take, you know, always have what I call your, your hammer and your saw. So you can take your notes and you can go back on your time and research everything we said. And if you find something that's, that's inconsistent with what you know is in the book, then email us. We'll respond to your email as long as it's in sincerity. Because you really truly want to know, and when we give you the information, you know we would hope that you would you would settle that it would settle it for you. But if it doesn't, that's okay too. We don't expect you to agree with us. We you ask them for information, we're giving the information. What you agree to or don't agree to, that's solely up to you, brothers and sisters. At the end of the day, it's your soul. If I teach you wrong or share lies, then it's my soul. I'm not gonna do it. You can believe that. You want somebody to lie to you, go to Geno Genesis or Charles Dow and all them other ones out there. They'll gladly tell you a lie for a price. But if you're looking for the truth, then you, you're coming right over here with us because we're going to teach from the book so we know we're teaching the truth. But again, every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So wherever you are, you got to adjust your clock around this earth if you want to join us and you're welcome to. You know, that being said, um, I'm going to take a little stroll over here. I know I asked my brother Adrian to take a look at it, and I'm not going to go too far. If I don't find it, then then I know he will, and, and that's good enough, you know, for me. Hallelujah. Yes, okay. Brother Adrian, thank you. I got it. But look at this, Deuteronomy, in our, inside the Torah, listen what it says, verse 9. When you come into the land which Yahuwah gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of the other nations. That means all the religions that were around us when we came to these Americas or wherever we are, when the colonizers came to Africa or Europe or Australia or the islands, he said we were not supposed to learn their abomination or worship, their abomination worship, everything they're worshiping, including their white Jesus and Christianity and Protestant and all that other stuff, Jehovah Witness, second day of all of it. He said we were not to learn that wickedness. He says abomination. I'm not saying it's what the heathens brought. And if you're participating in it, then you're participating, you're participating in what the heathens brought. And again, let me read it to you again. Take it from the book. Just coming from my mouth, but from the book. Uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 9. When you come into the land which Yahuwah gives you, or you, you shall not learn to do after the abomination, the abominable, the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that makes him or his, his son or his daughter 
pass through the fire or that uses divination. Divination is it's like voodoo and witchcraft and, and all these other, you know, you know, these little um what do they call these these little sacrifices they're doing? They're little spiritual things they do to see the future, determine the future, that kind of stuff that they taught. And they say, don't pass your son or daughter to the father. That means you're not supposed to be taking the lives of infants, whether they be newly con uh, conceived in the womb or at full term. You are not to put your hands on those babies. This is what this word says. Do what you want. But that's what the word says. You should not practice sorcery. Or enchanting, enchanting. You know, enchanting means going into you know the the you know into the gods. You know, enchanters mean calling in the calling gods, and I'm calling to the gods, like like Doctor Mumbi or whatever her name is over there. I'm calling to the ancestor gods and and telling the gods to come in. That's enchanters. My dead relatives, enchanters. They're calling up the dead. He said, no dealing with familiar spirits or wizards. And there's the one here, neuromancers. Again, in channels who people are casting spells and things of that nature, by the way, too. People who cast spells on people, things like those are in channels as well. Sorcery, magic, that type of stuff. Nor should you be watching programs that's emphasizing or glorifying magic and spell Harry Potter and all that stuff. Lord of the Rings, The Little Mermaid, Snow White, all of that stuff, witches and wizards, warlocks. So we're not supposed to have a part of anything like that. That's what the heathens did. And now some of our people are, are actually taking on the role of those demons. And, we, and we're celebrating a black, you know, mermaid, a black... You know, Snow White, a black, you know, Beauty and the Beast, celebrating witchcraft, sorcery, Israelites, taking upon the ways of the heathens. And Solomon said, we don't not supposed to learn that stuff. We're supposed to run away from that stuff. Those things are an abomination. The judgment of anything that's abomination, brothers and sisters, is going to be everlasting, you know, uh, disgust. A contempt, right? Did Daniel say? That's what's going to happen if you're an abomination. 12, 12 and 2. Rejection. Shame and contempt. Shame. You know what shame means? A total, you're going to look horrible. You're going to be made to feel a shame. Lowly, like nothing. Crap. Poop for doing those things. And yet they're celebrating them and encouraging them. And a lot of parents are pushing that to these children in forms of entertainment. I just wanted to be like, you know, Meghan Markle. And she lives amongst dead serpents and beasts now. Bearing lizard people onto the earth. Or bringing them, I'm sorry. One hell of a queen a princess or whatever the hell they call her, duchess. I call her a fool. But that's what the book says, a fool that rejects Abba Yah's truth. But anyway, brothers and sisters, that's all I have for you. I hope you're listening. Again, all these many books, go back, remember what he said. Let's go back one more time. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. And this is an answer to some of my brothers and sisters. I know that you expressed some concerns there. This is, this is not a rebuke. This is to enlighten. All right? Remember, this is to enlighten you. To help you understand nothing new under the sun. I told some of you think, well, what's going on, brother? All this stuff is coming out. Of, because he said in the last days these things would happen to us, brothers and sisters. That you're under attack. That's why they're throwing all that stuff out there. Or, or telling you, well, let me go look into this. and Let me go look into that. To keep you confused. That's what it said. Look, again. One more time and we're done. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear allure and guard his commandments. Means keep him. 
But this is the whole responsibility of your lifetime. For a lure shall bring every work into judgment. I'm sorry, let me go up one verse. 12 and 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. And further, cease, stop. These, my son, be acknowledged, understand. The making of many books, there is no end. And much studying or looking for these books or being distracted by these books are going to cause you to be weary. What is weary? Uncertain, tired, frustrated. It's going to give you the spirit of, 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 of quitting. The spirit of defeat, not victory. And he said, what's the, and, and, he, and so you can have affirmation or confirmation or whatever. Right after he says what? What is the whole conclusion of the matter? Right? He says what? The conclusion of the matter is not the many books, not the many writings. The conclusion of the matter is to keep the commandments of Yahuwah. That's your whole duty, sisters and brothers. Not all of that other stuff. So bring it back in. All right? That's what your brother is saying. Shut all that down. Get rid of all that noise, that white noise. It's just there to distract you. It wasn't there when you weren't learning. Now all of a sudden, you're in the knowledge. Now, here they come. Brother, you know the right word of Elohim? I don't give a damn what the right word of Elohim is. You... I know Yahuwah, and that's who I'm serving. Now, I don't know who y'all know. I'm talking about them. I serve Yahuwah, the one sovereign Elohim, or, or Lua. We're in the jungle. <laughs> and there are lions, tigers, I'm sorry. Tigers and lions, possibly. And you over there talking about crickets. That's called being distracted, easily distracted. <laughs> all right, brothers and sisters. <laughs> that said, I want to thank all my brothers and sisters who have been contributors, you know, to your brother in, in this, in this, I guess, for all intent purposes, message, ministry, whatever word it's called. But you're much appreciated. You know, I thank you very, 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 very much. And, you know, so I ask that you continue to be supportive. And those of you, you know, who are supporting in ways that maybe not necessarily with your resources but thumb up the video share the video that support too brothers and sisters okay all work is good work if it's work towards the building of Abba Yah's people in preparation for Abba Yah's return DFG talk to you soon Shalom <laughs>